today's episode of Pinch House Garage, we're going to learn how to lap valves, meaning we're going to grind down the valve seats so we can reuse old valves. Now, valves are very important. So in this episode, we're going to show you guys how to reuse your old valves to make them fit like new on an AWP head. So let's get to work. This is Pinch House Garage. So first things first, what you see here in front of you is a fully decked head with the uh, valve seats already grinded down. Now the reason why I had this done because we thought we were going to use new valves, but that's not the case. So in this scenario now, well, we're using old valves. Uh, these five and these five have already been done. We're going to work on these five right here in this cylinder number three. This is cylinder one, two, three, and four because this is the front of the head, this is the back. So we're going to be working on this one. So we have three intake and two exhausts. Now, the tools needed for this job is very, very minimal. Number one, you need a valve lapping tool. Uh, part number 25040. Uh, pick this up at AutoZone for $5. You need valve grinding compound. Just like that. By Permatex. Uh, part number 80036. This is pretty much all the necessary tools needed to lap your valves. Now, what is lapping? Well, lapping is the procedure where you need to grind the bottom of the valve seat, or actually the, the top of the valve seat right here. This is the bottom, this is the top, so that the valve itself mates back to its original surface. Now since these uh, valve, all these uh, valve seats have been grinded down, we need to make sure that this one, uh, fit, or the new valve, or the used new valve fits like a glove and not have a potential exhaust leak or intake uh, leak. So the way that we have to do that is by using this cream. Now in these ten, these two cylinders, I have the original um, valve stems. I have new ones that are going to be going in, but I use them so I can, when I slide them in, I can grind them and uh, just keeps them there without moving a little. Um, helps them guide all the way in and out a little bit easier, personally, I think, but not necessary. You can have all the valve stem seals uh, removed if you want to. Not 100% necessary to be in there. So, first part of your of the procedure is to grab one of your original valves. Now, what we want to do is coat the, the actual stem itself with a tiny bit of oil. Now, the reason for this is that we want this, and when it goes in, we want it to spin as freely as possible as we do the grinding procedure. You're going to get your compound. And you're going to put it on the top of the valve, not the bottom. And what we're going to do, you're going to put very, very little. I mean, you don't need a lot of uh, compound to do this job. Okay? Just like that. We're going to put the valve right in. Push it all the way down. Now with your lapping tool, you have a small and a large size. This is a small valve, so we're going to be using the small side. Now pay very, very close attention to the sound. I'm going to bring the microphone over so you guys can hear this. So the little poofy thing is my mic. 
we're going to go down and we're going to grind. It's going to hear a really loud grind noise and then it's going to get really, really subtle and eventually go away almost completely. You hear that? Okay. We're going to pop the valve back out and we're going to inspect. Now here, what you want to pay attention to is push the valve lapping compound back down to the main surface area. And the reason why we want to do this is because we want to lap this one more time. Pay attention to the noise. We're going to pop the valve back out one more time. We're going to clean the valve really quick. We're going to clean the surface that we just lapped the valve on. And we're going to inspect. What we're looking for on the valve is for any dark indentations like any type and those are kind of like little divots uh, where it's an uneven surface but if we do not see any of that on the valve then we're good what we're going to do is put it back in here because what happens is that this valve is now officially married to that um, image valve port you can now no longer move this valve to a different cylinder. So you're going to need to learn how to organize these valves when you take them back out so you can reinstall the new stem seals, the springs, the retainers, and keepers. So one thing that we did use in this uh, um, that I kind of made for myself is a little organizer. I'm going to show you guys this. I'm going to move my mic out of the way. This is a little organizer that I made, and you can see there's a one, hold on, there we go, there's a one and a two for cylinder one, cylinder two, and in the order that I did the valves in. So if I move this and orient it correctly, this is cylinder number two, and this valve goes from, we always go left to right, I mean, yeah, right to left when I when I do assembly. Um, so one two three one two so one two three one two this is how i organize my valves as cheap as possible with a piece of cardboard and a pen and just poke some holes in here and then stab them in there easy way to keep them organized and they don't fall or move out of the way very very easy trick and again costs you no money so now that we got this one done we're going to do really quickly the uh, exhaust valve the exhaust valve is one that you really want to focus on because this is what really matters is this guy the most. The, the exhaust valve on these motors get abused more than the intake valve. So you're going to have a lot more wear and a lot more uh, divots to worry about and you have to uh, um, do a little bit more lapping so you can fix that surface correctly and I'll show you why. You can see right on the valve all these little black indicators. The little dots, all those little black dots, those are pretty much uneven surfaces on the on the valve itself. Uh, itself. So what we need to do is make sure that all this uneven surface is gone with the valve um, that we choose uh, that we're going to use. So first things first, we're going to use our compound as always. Remember, less is more in this scenario because you want to make sure we don't put too much um, 
lapping uh, compound because uh, what happens is that it makes it slick and you won't be able to uh, turn the valve as you do the lapping procedure. You go down like this. And again, let's focus on the noise, the sound that it makes. You guys can hear it go now, it's going away. We're going to push the valve back out. What we gotta do next, remember, we gotta push the compound back into its little home. Okay, we're gonna pop out the valve one more time. And we're gonna clean the valve off and we're gonna inspect it. Because this is where we have to make sure all the little black spots are gone. If not, we're gonna have to redo it again. And you can see there's a couple little black spots still here. So we gotta fix that before this valve goes back in. So we're going to clean this surface area off. We're going to put brand new compound on here. Should have solved the problem. Now let's inspect all the little black spots that were here. Oh, not all the way clean. All the little black spots that we had that were uneven surfaces are now gone. That valve is ready to be placed in its new home. Remember guys, you cannot mix and match after you've uh, lapped them. They are now officially married to the valve um, port that you uh, lap them in. That is it. When you do new valves and you have brand new uh, fully uh, machined um, uh, valve seats, you can just slap them in there and that's it. Now, depending on the type of valve, if you have factory style valves or conical, conical, you're gonna have to take them, to, you have to take the valves and the head to the machine shop to get machined to match the conical valve. Those are very different style type of valves, so you cannot just slap them in. That was a different procedure for that. But we're talking about a factory style valve going on a factory style head, doing nothing else but um, getting the valve seeds grinded down and installing brand new valves into the head. Um, you are uh, allowed or you can, uh, you can have the head grinded down and you still have your brand new valves and you can lap them to mate them all to each cylinder if you want an even better seal. 
okay that is an option that you guys have i personally never needed to do that when i've done all my builds and i've never had to but if you guys want that peace of mind, by all means, go for it. It is an option for you guys to do. Um, so pretty much the next step and final step when you guys lap valves is inspecting for overwear. Now on these valves, there is an actual factory specification for how much you're allowed to, um, to uh, oversize the valve lap. Uh, so look up your Bentley. You get a micrometer and mic this gap right here. Um, we've already done that with these all, so I'm not concerned. We're all within factory specifications. So uh, when you lap them, they, it changes the actual size. So you gotta make sure you double check your space from here to here um, before and after you lap them to make sure they're within factory specifications. Besides that, once you do all that and get your, all your valve seats all lapped and ready to go, um, pull all your valves back out, pull your stem seals, and then proceed to finish building your head. Um, I'm not going to show you guys that, that procedure. This was just a quick DIY on how to lap valves. I do have a full DIY on assembling a head, so I'm not going to walk you guys through that because I already have a video for that. Thank you guys, everyone, for watching this episode of Pinchy Al's Garage, how to lap valves. And as always here at Pinchy House Garage, we're going to break, we're going to fix, and we're going to repeat. So peace out, everyone, and have a wonderful day.